morning, Pastor Brenda here, and welcome to worship on this third week after Epiphany. As we continue through the time of Epiphany, we're going to hear a lot about the stories and the calls to discipleship. It'll help us understand the, the true implications of our baptismal calling, the point of showing Christ to the world. And so, fellow disciples, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, and who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Come, come let us worship the Lord. We sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and verse 10. It challenges us to wrestle with the question, on whom should God have mercy? Our reading. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up and go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going about a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed God's mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we sing our gospel acclamation.
the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Some of my favorite memories from being an elementary school music teacher were when I would sing call and response songs with the kids. See if you can help me with some of these. Marco, Polo, the Lord be with you and also with you. To infinity and beyond, Hakuna Matata. Now, a call is only as good as the response that follows. Hear that. A call is only as good as the response that follows. Calls don't work very well if there isn't a response. If I'm going to yell out to my kids, Marco! And nobody answers? Well, it's a pretty sad call. We get to respond. We get to respond to our call in life, kind of like our fingerprints. They are ours, ours alone, just for us from God. Same thing goes for our calls, our invitations to be who we have been created to be. Sometimes it's extremely clear to know who you're called to be in life. You pursue it with passion and zoom off you go. It might mean off to a baseball field or zooming in the car to dance lessons. It might be artistic abilities or reading to grandparents or helping without being asked. But other times, things might be a bit more confusing and we might not know exactly to what we're being called. Let's think about what this means for our story today in the book of Mark. We're going to hear the word immediately a bunch of times in the book of Mark. Mark is always in a hurry to tell this crazy, amazing story of Jesus. Well, here's a crazy, amazing story for us. This happened to me a few years ago over in Berkeley, where I was studying to be a pastor. I found myself driving up Marin Street. It is the steepest street in Berkeley, but it was the only street that led to my seminary. So I am driving up, I mean truly up, this street, and there is a fountain of water from a burst fire hydrant. Water is shooting up into the air. I mean truly, a good 20 or 30 feet high. Water raining down everywhere. <laughs> Personally, as a broke seminarian, I was thinking, this is great. I get a free car wash. <laughs> I was also thinking, how in the world am I going to get around this? I couldn't. Crews were all on the scene and they were busy working through things. So I decided I was just going to drive <laughs> right through the mayhem. All seemed well right up until the moment I reached the middle. The middle is where, oh, the water fell back down to earth. Aha, uh -huh. what goes up does indeed come back down. And that much water forcefully falling down from that height, let me tell you, it was terrifying. I knew that the road was ahead of me, sort of, but I could not see where I was going. Using the windshield wipers? Yeah, no, that would have been a joke. The force of this mini maelstrom was way too powerful. 
All I could see, all I could hear was this thunderous water pounding down on my car. I, I had to continue to drive with a prayer that another car wouldn't be in my path upon mm, exiting this crazy waterfall on Marin Avenue. I get to the other side of this falling water and all is well, all is quiet. I'm fine, my car is fine and quite clean and the sun is shining again. What was that? Once I got up to the campus, I had to pull over and just laugh. I had to laugh at the fact that I had forcefully been reminded of my baptismal call. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, baptized into Christ. Oh, trusting in the grace and love of God. That is our baptismal call. A call to action, a call to faith, and a call to trust. We don't need exploding fire hydrants to be reminded of our call in life. Jesus' words say it loud and clear. From now on, you will be catching people. Come with me. I'll make you a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. And the disciples didn't ask questions. They dropped their nets and followed. They answered the call. Now, I've been answering my call, I pray, to a life in Christ since a cold day in March 1979, when I was splashed with the waters of baptism. You don't live there in a city there like, you know, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, eh? Right down there by the big old lake, you betcha, without being reminded, eh, of the waters of baptism and the promises they hold. And baptism? Baptism has had a hold on me ever since. My parents, my grandparents, my church leaders, they all fulfilled these baptismal promises of placing the scriptures in my hands, teaching me the creeds and the prayers. I learned through story, and I certainly learned through song. Well, church, that's what a call is. It's a story. It's a mapping out of all those little details that somehow add up to make a little bit of, of godly sense in your life. It's the space in between all of those many points that is filled with this spirit we call holy, that connects the dots for us, that shape us and shape our call. I'm sure you've heard of the, the struck by lightning one day kinds of stories of how God zaps people into service, kind of a, a holy electric awakening. Sometimes though, it's more of an accumulation a collection of each choice, each breath that somehow has allowed us to awaken ourselves into this life lived with Christ. Maybe it's mission trips or famines and or church lock-ins, vacation Bible school, church camp, moments that that where you discovered the difference between learning about faith and living your faith. I've been answering my call to a life in Christ since those college days where I served as a designated driver. Helping a neighbor, and in my case, literally my next door neighbor, was the loving thing to do. By literally answering their call at two in the morning, I was answering God's call to watch out for the other, the lost, the lonely, and apparently the inebriated. Now let's be real, this call process, whether it's to call a pastor or your call in life, it can be kind of confusing and to both churchy and non-churchy people. So you'll be hired, mm, yeah, but only after prayerful consideration and conversation. 
Oh, okay. So you'll be interviewed to see if you get the job and then they'll call you to let you know you have it. Mm, well, yes, but the call is more of a sense of purpose and how we lead in ministry. So a call is a hobby or a passion. Well, it can be. And it's a leading, a directing from God to live out the mission we're supposed to be living out here on earth. See what I mean? It's been a kick to try to explain what it means to be called as a pastor. But not all of us are called to be pastors. But all of us are called to our own important story. All of us have these moments where we realize, you know what? I simply cannot not be doing what I'm called to do in life. You're drawn to it. You're compelled to it. You are called into a life that puts the love of Christ and others first. Martin Luther got this. He called it our vocation, living into what we are called to do. And as one contemporary philosopher, Tom Christensen writes, the test for vocation is not, are you doing something religious? No, instead, are you serving the real needs of your neighbor? That's the question. And that's the response to which we are still being called. Jesus's words from Mark still apply to us here today. We are to be new kinds of fishermen, fisherwomen, fisher people, but it really has nothing to do with actual fish. Other than we know that our faith is quite alive, like a squirming fish. It's a living faith is my point. We're called to faith and action just like the disciples that were on that boat, just like the disciples I get to see seated in the cars that gather on Sundays, just like the disciples watching this video from home right now. Jesus is calling, calling upon us to trust him, to count on him, to know we are loved unconditionally. And as much as I can preach and preach and preach, We've come to know that faith is caught much more than it's taught. Faith is alive when it's caught from a neighbor or a friend or a family member, or quite frankly, even a stranger. Lighting candles for those for whom we pray, that's being called. Speaking kindly to our loved ones is how we are called. Forgiving a friend is how we are called. Faith is caught more than it's taught. Well, then I think it's time to go fishing. Amen. Together we sing our hymn of the day. Jesus calls us. We sing. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our lives while dressed this sea day by day his sweet voice soundeth saying christian follow me jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden star from each idol that would keep us saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still He calls in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than these. Jesus calls us by the mercies. Savior, may we hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience. Serve and love thee best of all.
Let us confess what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people. You'll hear me say, let us pray, and you'll respond with, have mercy, O God. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Today, we pray for Al, Becca, Bethany, Brian, Caitlin, Christine, Connie, Coralie, Crystal, Dan, David, Deanna, Dolores, Denise, Emily, Evelyn, Howie, Janet, Jim, Karen, Keith, Kevin, Krista and Paul, Lee, Louis, Lois, Lori, Luann, Macy, Michelle, Mike, Paul, Rob, Robert, Sarah, Sheila, Shirley, Stephanie, Steve, Tammy, Tom, Tony, Tracy, Wayne, Wendy, and those we now name aloud or in our hearts. May God shower them with compassion. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God.
For our congregations and communities, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet here during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ. We trust in the comfort and hope of the resurrection upon the death of Karen Sundberg, aunt of Sue Hess. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing. May God the Creator strengthen you, Jesus the Beloved fill you, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter keep you in peace. Amen. We sing our sending hymn. We are marching in the light. We sing and perhaps dance. Next Sunday is our last Sunday to worship at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church. We'll gather at Gethsemane Lutheran Church over in Wallace for all of February, including Ash Wednesday. And next Sunday is also the day we will welcome the Desitel family into membership at St. Stephen's. So we're looking forward to that. Stay safe, friends. Stay well and stay full of faith. Go in peace and be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh
of God. We are praying in the light of God. We are praying in the light of God. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying in the light of God. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying in the light of God. Singing, singing, we are singing in the light of God. We are singing.